All right, welcome back. Here with another replay, playing as the Tomb Kings again. And this time we're matched up against the Beastmen, which is not a faction I've seen much of in the um, ranked games that I've played. And we're playing on Broken Leg Goalie. So I wasn't quite sure what to expect with, from the Beastmen. I wanted to have some anti-large because I know they like to bring Minotaurs. And um, I know that Cyborgs would potentially be an option for them. And I also wanted to bring some kind of units I could deal with lightly armored infantry because I don't believe much of the Beastman infantry has too much uh, too much armor on them often. So I've got High Queen Kalita. I mostly brought her just because I want to play around with her and, and use use her. I've only been using Cetra and Arcan for the most part when I've been playing occasionally Tomb Princes. Uh, I've got three squads of Skeleton Spearmen, one of them being the Regiments of Renown. Got three squads of Ushapti, two squads of Nehekar Warriors, backed up by two squads of Skeleton Archers, and one Screaming Skull Catapult. And I'll note that uh, Kalita is on the Serpent. Uh, I forget what it's called. What the, um, what the mount is called. But regardless, for my opponent playing as the Beastman, he has got a Brave Shaman of the Wild on a Chariot. He's got... Two squads of Razor Gore Chariots. He's got the Blood Brute Behemoth Gorgon model. He's got, um, what do you call them? Butchers of Calcagar, so Regiments of Renowned Minotaurs with shields. And off on this side, which I didn't even, I didn't notice in um, the match, he's got two squads of Ungor Spearmen Herd with shields. So I'll speed this up a little bit. And I'll note that I was moving towards the middle um, I noticed the mass amount of chariots up on the up on the hillside and the Gorgon and I was like oh shit here we go because you can see most of my troops are infantry so as soon as I notice this I'm thinking to myself okay what I want to do is try to use my Ushabti to slow them down you know because of their mass and um, try to just prevent them from plowing through the through the infantry with the Ushapti the best I can. So that's kind of my game plan here. To start off, they got Minotaurs with great weapons on the way. <clears throat> Bray Shaman and, a, uh, and the Gorgon charging downhill. You can see I'm backing up my Ushapti. Not wanting them to take the initial charge and just be by themselves. You can see I kind of was not controlling my troops the best. They're, they're scattered into each other. And that is not something you want to be doing while there are chariots on the prowl. Um, my catapults are on the approach. I want to remove them kind of more central to this rock um, cliff because if I had them too far back, I figured they'd be able to get the chariots around the around the uh, rear. And side charges coming off, doing pretty significant damage. Took about a third of the health of my um, of my regiment's renowned skeletons. What are these guys called? King the Kesh's Scorpion Legion. So Shopti running in to get some disruption. Screaming Skull Catapult firing, just trying to do some leadership damage and um, chip away at the uh, Brave Shaman. The Screaming Skull Catapults do have pretty good armor piercing values. Now I specifically am targeting this guy because I noticed that he had only 50 armor in this Gorgon and everybody else had 100 armor. Um, all the Razor, Razor Gore Chariots had 100 armor, so I'm assuming this is going to be a Pit of Shades coming down. Um, nope, Cygor Summon. So Cygork Summon coming down, High Queen Kalita charging in and jump on top of that Gorgon. You can see he's getting dealt pretty well with. Between the Ushapti jumping on top of him, all the archers focusing him and whatnot, um, getting pretty good damage done. Got the uh, Regiments of Renown, Sepulchral Stalkers, Eyes of the Desert coming in to support. I brought them because of all the chariots and whatnot that I saw. And the uh, Minotaurs coming in to reinforce, so the, the Bloodroot Behemoth is getting dealt away with. Luckily, him charging in was not a good move for him, just because of the amount of archers and whatnot I had. Another Cygor coming in. I'm not sure if he had two Cygor summons or, or how he did that. Um, actually, no, wait, that's the that's behemoth right there. That's the only Cygor summon that happened. Um, so now I'm shooting at him with a catapult because this guy's already fleeing off. I'm gonna chase him down and fish him off with Kalita. Uh, you can see I'm taking the, the edge on the gold value pretty happily to start things off. Cygor is now getting chased off. Again, this, this catapult is going to take away eight leadership of anything that he's shooting at, so pretty handy there. Bray Shaman getting chased off in the back. 
the uh, butchers of Talcum Guard are now charging in, but luckily for me, they're charging into the eyes of the desert, who have armor piercing and anti-large. Decent armor, decent combat stats, um, especially for a unit that is, I guess, somewhat range focused. Backing my skeleton archers up, trying to keep them away from the uh, the front lines, and just keep getting shots in. You can see the butchers of Calvin Guard. Although they are lightly armored, they do have a shield, so still wanting to focus on top of the Cygor. And it looks like, yeah, they actually do have a second Cygor. Um, I believe that was another summon, but I've been like kind of losing track of a couple things as I'm as I'm narrating here. Tomb Guards of Halberds coming up, coming up the hill. Um, Skeleton Horsemen, these guys, I put mass chevrons on because this guy read it up faster than I expected and I uh, I threw a bunch of uh, my extra money on top of those guys. At least I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I, I've had so many cases of people readying up super fast in the ranked queue. It seems like it's a uh, kind of recurring theme, but uh, most, some people are, are pretty well mannered and they'll give you like a 10 second ready up just so you Know that they're they're good to go, and then they'll unready to know that they're giving you time. So, just one of those things that you appreciate in the rank scene, especially for me, as I'm learning the unit rosters. I take a little bit longer, try to keep it under a couple minutes. So, anyways, scream skull catapult still firing in the backfield, jumping on top of those uh, minotaurs with great weapons who are going to be trying to take this take this uh, second point away from me got some skeleton spearmen sitting on there. They should be charging over to deal with these minotaurs, but I lost track of them. There's a lot going on in here. I'm really trying to stop these razor gore chairs from doing too much damage. You can see I've still pulled quite far ahead in the uh, damage value. Um, tomb guards with halberds matched up against the ungor spearmen. We got some standard tomb guard coming to support as well. Not charging with the skeleton horsemen yet. I uh, want to get the the uh, both squads of the Ungors tied up in melee combat before I charge them with the cavalry. A lot of my infantry are getting dealt away with. Um, front lines are pretty sparse at this point. Still some Ushabti, still some Skeleton Spearmen and Nehekar Warriors, but for the most part, my front lines have been cleared up. High Queen Kalita has taken a pretty good amount of damage. Razor Gore Chariots are still in here doing some work. Uh, the cycle charging has slowed down a little bit, but you know, still a thing that's going on. Scream Skull Catapult is still healthy. Got you shot with great bows here at support. Again, these guys are going to be really good at dealing with the chariots, dealing with the minotaurs and whatnot. Part of the reason that I brought them as uh, some of my reinforcements. See the chariots coming around this way. I'm bringing High Queen Kalita back, just trying to keep her out of the engagement, give her some time to um, you know get secured and safe. Now they're charging in on top of my skeleton archers, plowing through them. Going to do a ton of damage right there. <clears throat> Minotaurs with great weapons are still in the mix with the sepulchral stalkers. These guys are really doing a lot of work. I'm not sure if he understood um, how well these guys would perform in melee combat against the uh, Minotaurs, but I'm not sure. You know, he might have felt like there weren't too many other good targets, and he wanted to shut them down, given the range firepower they were bringing to the table. So, um, Razor Gore Chair is still doing a lot of work. You see, I brought another squad of Ushabti Great Bows in. This is this is honestly becoming my favorite unit in the uh, in the Tomb King roster. I'm not sure how they are from a balance perspective, but for me, I really enjoy using them. I feel like they're a great solution to some of the uh, beefy large units that that other factions bring in, and um, decent price point at only a thousand one hundred um, you know, cost. So. Anyway, shooting in with the Sepulchral Stalkers and the, and the Ushanti Great Bows, trying to deal with these Razor Gore Chariots and, and finish them off. Again, I'm really making it a point to shoot at targets that have low leadership with these Screaming Skull Catapults to try to finish them off and break them. Um, you can see my, my Skeleton Horsemen have charged in here, and there have been, I got a couple cycle charges that I, I might not have caught on the camera uh, in the back of the Ungor Spear Herds and got them running off the field. Bray Shaman still skirting in the in the uh, backfield. My opponent was definitely paying some more attention after that initial engagement to keep him in the back and not let him die off. And uh, you can see I'm kind of doing the same with High Queen Kalita. Now at this point, now my um, my kind of center mass is dealt away with. And you'll see all I've got is archers, great bows, sepulchral stalkers, and High Queen Kalita, and they've got a bunch of gore herd coming through. And uh, unfortunately for me, they're going to be shutting down some of my shooting here. Uh, now my my skeleton horsemen are now on the way to reinforce. I'm sitting one squad of tomb guard 
and one squad of halberds up on point three, just because I know the beast might have pretty good mobility and I want to be able to deal with um, infantry and large units equally on point three. But over here, just trying to deal with this uh, this squad of gore herd. Luckily for me, the, the catapults are like right in their face and they're gonna get some good good shots off. Um, let's see, so we've got some centagores coming also over point one. I've not been able to apply pressure on this. Another squad of centagores coming through the middle on the point two. They're gonna be charging into my skeleton horsemen, supporting the gore herd there. Luckily for me, there's a gore herds with, uh, with axes and not spears. I'm pretty sure there's a spear variant. Raising War Chariots being dealt away with by the Sepulchral Stalkers, just finishing them off. They've got two models left, very, very, very low health, and uh, they're going to be fleeing off the field. Although they did, they did uh, kind of shut down my Screaming Skull Catapults, whose ammunition is basically gone anyways. Centagores charging into the um, Eyes of the Desert, but luckily they're not going to be able to do too great against them, partially because they don't have too much armor. And they are large, so the Sepulchral Stalkers will deal well with them, but also they don't have good armor piercing value. Eyes of the Desert, uh, desert have 80 armor as is. Uh, shutting down my Skeleton Spearman, who I tried to pull back and, and get to a safe place, but uh, here I threw my Ashanti in to try to help them out and just keep them secure on the field. You can see in the backfield he's got uh, squads of Gore Herd coming through the woods. They seem to be uh, taking a break there, kind of sitting on the back side of that hill. I'm not sure if he lost lost track of them with micro or what. Um, I completely forgot I brought in a Cambrian War Sphinx. Now this was my counter to him bringing the Gore Herd masses. He had like I think three squads of Gore Herds that he brought in down the middle, and I can't remember if I saw the ones coming up on on this hillside. But for me, that was the time for me to bring in the Cambrian War Sphinx. Real big beefy guy. Go to anti uh, infantry performance, and he's got some shooting on him. These guys are are um, very lightly armored. Some of them don't have the shields, so uh, the Cameron War Sphinx was going to be a great solution for that. And also try to, you know, having that having that large monster in the front is really going to help to get in the mix with the infantry and not just be, um, you know, another model that's going to get trapped up behind other infantry. So we've got Tomb Guard, Nehekar Warriors, Skeleton Horsemen charging forward. The Eyes of the Desert are still trying to deal with the Centigors. Looks like they're they're kind of chasing them off the field. Um, my Screaming Skull Catapult has just ran out of ammunition. The Ushapti are still getting good shooting in. I think they are shooting at the um, Debration. You can see he's taking a pretty good amount of damage. Still kind of running around side to side in the background. Um, at this point, you can see I'm way behind in victory tickets. That's one thing I've not been uh, commenting on. And unfortunately for me, they've got a big herd of guys coming over here on a point three. And they're starting to take that from me. Now I do have control of point two. I think I just took that back right there. Um, but they've got a pretty big squad of guys coming over here. They got a uh, Ungor Spearherd coming back from retreating. The two Gore Herds that I mentioned earlier, Razor Gore Chariots charging in. I don't have any reinforcements coming yet, but this is one of those moments where I, in the past I've had a tendency to kind of just sit on one point and I was really trying to get off of here and um, send reinforcements as opposed to just stalling and thinking like maybe I can get reinforcements there and they'll deal with it. Um, at this point I was kind of reassessing the field, trying to see what was going on with uh, what they had in the middle and um, send anything that I could basically spare from point two over to point three. Now my opponent is doing the same. So you can see Senegors charging uphill, Bray Shaman on the way, Minotaurs with great weapons that just brought it, got brought in as reinforcements who are fully fresh coming in. And um, these Minotaurs are backing away from point two. So he, I'm quite confident he's in a place, yeah, he's in double, um, he's, in, he's in a situation where I need to get a triple cap in order to win this. And if he can take this from me, it's basically game over. So um, just trying to, just trying to stop that from happening. Um, it's getting really close here. I got some Ushabti running uphill. High Queen Kalita trying to circle around the back and get a leadership buff. And I can't remember if I had any abilities left on her at this point, but um, she's on the way. My uh, King Nikesh Scorpion Legion, Regiments of Renowned Spearmen are on the way as well. And um, my Cameron War Sphinx has made it up the hill. Eyes of the Desert have made it up the hill. They're dealing with some Centaurs and Minotaurs. They look like they're, they're about to crumble or at least get taken care of. Um, just taken off the field by these Minotaurs with great weapons. 
Tomb Guard are unfortunately not going to perform too well against the Centigors or against the uh, Minotaurs. These are the Sword variants, so they're not going to be able to get too much damage value out. Now on this side, I figured it was trying to try to make something happen. When I noticed that the Triple Cat was there, I sent some Skeleton Spears at least to just put some pressure on. I don't think I've been any other reinforcements headed that way. You can see I'm still quite a bit ahead in the Gold Valley, but somehow he still has a pretty, pretty large amount of units on the field. I don't think the Beastmen have any type of healing going on, um, but somehow he's still got a pretty good amount of troops on the field. Luckily, I'm chasing off some of these uh, Gore Herd. The Minotaurs with great weapons are still standing strong. The Bray Shaman has been dealt with. I think I was able to kill him with some of my Shopee with Great Bows. Uh, I'm pretty sure I remember bringing them around this uh, this angle to do that. We've got Centivores charging in the middle, I'm trying to get on top of my, uh, my Skeleton Archers. Luckily, these are the, the Blessed Legion. I brought these guys because they'd be able to deal with kind of like mid to light armor units. They have uh, armor, sundered armor on their missiles, so they take 30 armor away from units that they're shooting at. So you can see Senegors, they have 35 armor. Now they're down to five. And so even if I have them fighting against a troop that is not good at armor piercing, um, they're still gonna deal pretty good damage to the, to the Senegors. So luckily I was able to hold on to point three and kind of chase off this big mass over here. On the um, left flank, I'm trying to take this from the Beastmen, but unfortunately they brought some uh, more gore, gore herds to support. Ungor Raiders coming as well. And I don't have anything over here other than these Skeleton Spearmen, so now I'm kind of getting desperate. You know, he's at 100, um, 1,325 points. Um, although his Lord is dead, and now High Queen Kalita is dead because she got killed by the Minotaurs with great weapons. So what I'm doing here is I'm like, oh shit, this is... You know, this is about to be over unless I can get a triple cap. Mm, I had enough over here to kind of deal with these Minotaurs. So Shopti and Tomb Guards are fighting them. You can see leadership is not great for either faction. Um, bringing in... Initially, when I brought these Screaming Skull Catapults in, I thought it was, it was probably not a good idea. Um, like right after I clicked them. But then I realized that with the splash damage and whatnot, they would be able to try to help me wrestle this point from, uh, from my opponent. He's got some Senegors coming in, he's threatening point two. Razor Gord uh, Chariot still alive, on, um, kind of on this downhill at slope. He's probably not going to take point three from me at this at this um, time. Got some Nekar Warriors, Ushabti, and Tomb Guard over there to deal with these these uh, Minotaurs and Gore Herd with shields. And at this point, I've got Ushabti coming over this way. And I brought a new Shopti because I saw that a lot of what he had was just standard infantry. Nothing with great armor piercing value. The Shopti have 90 armor. And so um, make some you know good performers in a situation like this. The Screaming Skull Catapult is really helping those uh, Skeleton Spearmen do well. But unfortunately, this guy's starting to get up to the, um, you know, getting real high on the victory points here. I've got some, uh, some Skeleton Horsemen that are gonna come around and try to deal with some of these Ungors. Another squad of Skeleton Spearmen coming in through the middle. Senegor's not able to wrestle point two for me. And at that point, my opponent forfeited. So I think what he realized was within the next maybe like 15 seconds or so, I was going to be able to wrestle this point from him. And I had solid control over the middle and over, on, over my side. He had a lot of units fleeing off. And he was probably out of um, reinforcement supplies. And really, once I dealt with this chariot, everything was coming this way. So that, that was a really close match. When I, when I saw the victory points for like the last five minutes of the match, I was checking those on and off, you know, while microing. And I was getting really nervous, but luckily I was able to pull it back. Uh, well played to my opponent, definitely good performance. Um, you know, he, he did a good job of controlling the objectives and using his mobility. But luckily for me, I was able to take some pretty good trades, especially in the beginning. Um, my archers and um, my Ushaku with great bows did a lot of work against the Razor Gore Chariots, against his Lord, against the Gorgon, the Cygor uh, summons and whatnot. And that was really what did it for me. So quick look at the stats. Kalita got 2,200 about, so pretty good, pretty good stats. Um, she probably cost a little bit less than that. Because I, I did bring her somewhat bare bones. Ushanti did all right. Basically got their value overall. Screaming Skull Catapult did more 
more than its value. I think these cost 700. Nothing too crazy on um, on any of my infantry, though these archers did really good. I think they only cost 475, so definitely pulled their weight. Cameron War Sphinx did all right. Probably could have used it better. I, I honestly was losing track of it. I I have a tendency to not bring large single entity mods, uh, models in this game. And so when I do bring them, sometimes I lose track of them. Um, so didn't do great on that, but Sepulchral Stalkers, Eyes of the Desert, a lot of work there. They cost, I think, 1,350. Shop Teeth with Great Bows did a lot of work. Tomb Guard with Halberds, pretty good. Standard Tomb Guard, Skeleton Horseman, and uh, Blessed Legion of Koth. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, but anyways, it did all right. So for my opponent, Bray Shaman in the Wild, not sure how much he costs, so hard for me to say. The Gorgon got dealt away with really quick, so he didn't get much of his value. Um, I think he might be an anti-large unit. The Butchers of Kalkengar didn't, didn't do too great. This Chariot got pretty good value, this one not so much. Nothing crazy on the, um, what are these guys called, Ungors. Minotaurs were doing work. I'm surprised. I, I actually thought I dealt with the Minotaurs with great weapons pretty well, but these guys did a lot of work. Um, admittedly, I don't know if these were resummons, so that's that's possible, but Senegors did all right. And uh, yeah, that's basically that. So anyways, really close match, good match. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.